Hi everyone, back here again for another video. I got again the chance to borrow my friend's MacBook Air M1. So in this video, I will see how it is to use a MacBook compared to how I use my iPad Pro as a laptop. And in this video, I will not talk about specs, but instead I will talk about my real life usage and see if everything I do on my iPad Pro, being an iPad only user, if I can do on the MacBook all the things that I want to do. And I think I already know the answer is yes. But I also know for sure one thing I won't be able to do on the MacBook is use the Apple Pencil. Anyway, let's see from the start when I turn on these devices and when I use it until the end of my workflow. Obviously, my iPad is smaller as I have here the iPad Pro 11 inch and the MacBook Air comes in one size which is 13 inches. Though a bit heavy due to its build quality, both are definitely easy to carry around. And when opening these two, it's pretty similar except with the iPad, I need to use my two hands. While on the MacBook, I can use one hand. Well, almost. Because before I can fully open the lid, the bottom part lifts up. Very unusual for a MacBook. So I still need to use my other hand to hold it down to open the lid in the angle I want. Then, unlocking these two devices are again very similar. In the iPad, I need to turn on the screen and then Face ID will unlock it. On the MacBook, I open the lid and then I can use the fingerprint scanner to unlock the MacBook. The usual key in, password key in also works. I can't deny that the MacBook Air's Retina display is really good. But I really love the experience I get from the iPad's Liquid Retina with ProMotion display. The colors are not only vibrant, but the animation when moving around the iPad is really smooth. Another point about the display is that it seems the iPad's screen is brighter than the MacBook. Although, the contrast seems to be also higher. While for me, then the MacBook at full brightness, the colors look more balanced. Now still about the display, as an iPad user, I'm obviously used to the touchscreen. And moving to use a MacBook with just a trackpad, as obviously it doesn't have a touchscreen, it makes me feel the trackpad moves slow. But I think it's just because I'm used to reaching out my hand and tapping on the iPad screen, which is obviously faster. And lastly, without the Apple Pencil, this means I obviously cannot write and draw like what I can do on my iPad on the MacBook. Maybe soon, we'll see a MacBook with a touchscreen. Now, in terms of the apps I use on my iPad, I can mostly use them on the MacBook. The apps I mainly use for browsing the net are Safari and Chrome, and both work perfectly well. And obviously, this is a very pretty easy task for the MacBook to handle. As for watching YouTube, I can watch it from the desktop version or from the Chrome extension on the MacBook. And I must say the experience is pretty the same as my iPad. And why I say it's the same? It's because watching videos on the MacBook is definitely nice. The videos are crisp and clear. The speakers are also pretty loud. However, what I notice is that the videos on the iPad is clearer and also the iPad seems to be a bit louder than the MacBook. 
watch and listen here and let me know in the comments which you think is clearer and louder. For me, it looks like the iPad is really just a tad bit louder and brighter, but let me know in the comment section down below. For the other apps I use on my iPad are the note-taking apps so I can try to be productive and organized. And on the other hand, same as everyone, I use chat apps to stay connected with family and friends. So the apps I use for note-taking are GoodNotes, Craft, and OneNote. For chat apps like Line and Viber, famous ones in Asia. These apps are all available in the App Store, so I can use this on the MacBook. And I can use this and pick up where I left off from my iPad. However, using GoodNotes for journaling, obviously, I cannot write on the MacBook. Well, I should say I can write, but I cannot write well. Next, I want to talk about the keyboard and trackpad. If you have seen my other video about the keyboard comparison between the MacBook and Magic Keyboard, you will know that the typing experience on both are great per minute. Also, from another video of mine, I type the fastest on the Magic Keyboard. Anyway, the keyboard shortcuts that I use a lot on my iPad work well in the MacBook too, so there's no big adjustment for me. Keyboard shortcuts are a big part of my usage and also spotlight search is one of my favorite shortcuts and I'm so glad it works well on the MacBook Air as it works on the iPad. I can easily search and open apps, do quick web searches and even calculate and I don't necessarily need to open Safari or Chrome. As for the multitasking, this is something I need to learn more on the MacBook Air and the same goes with the trackpad gestures as these are quite different from the iPad. I feel the gestures in the iPad is more natural to use and so it's easy to learn. I can simply and easily drag apps to go to split screen mode or even drag apps to do the slide over screen and switch around apps. In the MacBook Air, I had to read and learn about it, but so far, I haven't found a way to do split screen easily. I saw the option to tell window to the left or right side of the screen, but then I haven't figured out how I can open any app I want beside this other window, as it only seems to let me do it for one other app. What I wanted to do is do split screens like I do in the iPad by dragging an app from the dock or like in the Windows where I just uh, drag a window to, the, to one side and it will split the screens equally in the middle. I'm not sure if it's possible in MacBooks, so MacBook users out there, any tips? Now going to the trackpad gestures, this is something I need to learn more on the MacBook Air. I just find it more intuitive to use the iPad Magic Keyboard's trackpad compared to the MacBook Air's. It's because there's some the same it's because there's some gestures that are the same kind of between the MacBook and the iPad like the three finger swipe left or right to switch apps but what I noticed in the MacBook is that it only works on pages that are maximized. If it's like this minimized or small windows then it doesn't it doesn't work. 
So anyway, I think I will just leave with using Command Tab to switch apps on the MacBook Air until I learn more how to use these trackpad gestures. A big task that I heavily do on my iPad is video editing. I only use my iPad Pro to edit and upload my YouTube videos. And I mainly use the VLLO app. And so far, it serves me well. No lags or crashes, and so far, I'm pretty happy with it. Obviously, video editing is something that a powerful device like the MacBook Air is for. And since video editing is the most important part of my YouTube work, obviously, I looked up around at my video editing apps options on the MacBook Air. VLLO can be downloaded, but it's not built for the MacBook, so it's not an option. iMovie is a free editing app, which is a native video editing in the MacBook. And in fact, it is a better version than the iPad. Although to use this, for me, I need to spend a lot of time to learn how to use this. And this keeps me thinking twice as it will slow me down to complete my video editing work. What I'm planning if I get a chance to borrow again this MacBook Air for my friend is to try another app which is also a free app and quite famous to YouTubers. And this is the DaVinci Resolve 17. They offer the free version, so I want to see if this is something I can manage to learn how to use. If I can, then maybe this will help me decide if I should get my own Mac, MacBook Air or Mac Mini. As for peripherals, I can connect my Bluetooth keyboard and mouse, and I can also connect this to the external monitor. I have interesting observations on both devices. On the iPad, as we all know, we cannot maximize the whole screen of the monitor. We still have these black bars on both sides. On the other hand, the MacBook Air, I can use the whole monitor screen. This is if I have set the display settings to scale on the monitor. However, if I choose the built-in retina then you will also have the black bars on the sides. But if I choose the monitor, it will have the black bars on the MacBook's screen on top and at the bottom. And if I want to close the MacBook's lid just to use the external monitor, it won't work. I need to power it up and charge it to use it on the monitor with the lid closed. So the obvious conclusion is that the MacBook is more than capable to do what I do on my iPad, except for writing with Apple Pencil, of course. And it also it takes getting used to the more complex settings and gestures on the MacBook, like even just a simple setting, how to close the lid and make it sleep. I'm still trying to figure it out. Compared to the iPad, when I close it with the magic keyboard, it goes to sleep right away. I tend to say that the iPad is easier to use and I can do all what I want without a laptop. But maybe it's just because I'm so used to this device, so maybe I need to really try the MacBook more. Let's see if my friend will let me borrow this again. Or maybe I should get my own Mac Mini. What do you think? Anyway, let's see in future videos. So that's it. Thanks for watching.